Hi Scorpio, welcome to your May 2022 reading. We are doing this reading the day before the eclipse in Taurus and that eclipse is <clears throat> showing all of us, you know, where we need to dig up the ground in our life, where we need to create a little bit of change, till the soil, create that, you know, bring up some new soil, some fresh soil so that we can plant the seeds. Venus is going to be conjunct Jupiter. <coughs> Excuse me. And that eclipse is happening in your seventh house. And it is, it is, this eclipse is ruled by an exalted Venus conjunct Jupiter that is at home in Pisces. So there's a lot of benefits that can come out of this. But as we come into May, we are asked, are we making the changes? Are we creating, it doesn't have to be chaos, right? But it, it has to be some sort of disruptment. You know, we have to disrupt our lives in some sort of way. And when we think about disrupting our lives in some sort of way, that can get really scary because of the stigma of the word disrupt, right? Because it sounds terrible. Like who wants to be disrupted? Sometimes you have to be, and sometimes it is uncomfortable. And <clears throat> um, for you guys, it, it's, it's in the area of relationships. And this solar eclipse is asking you to be honest with yourself. Because we all make choices in our lives based on where we are in that moment. And... You've made choices in your life based on where you were in the moment that you were making that choice and you've grown. You're a new person. You're a new person every single day. But this kind of new person is now recognizing that it's recognizing the restrictions of where you haven't allowed yourself to grow based on the relationships that you have with other people in your life. Because your values have changed. And the things that you want in life, whew, this is why I wanted to do this before the eclipse. Because May for you guys will have endings that happen, cycles are ending, um, some of those cycles have a lot to do with the way that you're thinking about things, the way that you feel pressed into thinking about things. Deep breaths through it. Ten of Swords is the first card that came out. And sometimes those endings and in coming into May and recognizing what the endings have to be, um, the fears that we have is that it's going to be like the worst possible case scenario out of anything that could happen in our lives, anything that could happen to us, this is what's going to happen. And that's what the Ten of Swords feels like. And then we have the Eight of Swords. And then we have the Four of Cups. So just coming into May, right off of this eclipse that's supposed to be really super beneficial... And I know that everybody's been touting that, and I'm not here to give any kind of fear to anybody whatsoever. Change is, is eminent. We all go through change. Change is evolution. This is how we grow. This is how we learn. This is how we process things. Change has to happen. It's the perspective that we have around the change. It's recognizing that, yes, change is hard. 
And sometimes change can be very emotional. But if we don't allow it to happen, we cannot see the blessings behind it. We cannot see sometimes that hindsight, that 2020 hindsight doesn't happen until we've made the change. Sometimes we can already see the the positive when we make the change, right? We can already feel that positive. We can already see that positive. But in some moments when we're not expecting the change, which is going to be a lot of May during eclipse season, Jupiter is going to be sextile Pluto. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening and change is inevitable. The sun is going to be conjunct Uranus and the North Node. Deep breaths, right? And that's all happening in your relationship sector. So, Ten of Swords, Eight of Swords. Absolutely. When we are in this kind of state of mind, we are also in the Four of Cups state of mind where we can't see the blessings. We can't see what the universe is trying to offer us. Sorry for the glare. However, there's something big, fat, <laughs> ace of pentacles. And literally, guys, like, can I, can I get, can I, can we just look at that for a minute? That ace of pentacles is literally the, the fourth cup coming out of the sky and that girl is ignoring it. Sometimes we have to see the endings that happen in our lives as really big, fat blessings and the universe is like, you're welcome. I moved that out of your way. Tower moment. On You're welcome. Because if we're being honest, we don't always know what's best for us. We would like to think that we do. But at the end of the day, when it really comes down to it, we don't know, we always know what's best for us. So, and then we have the Four of Pentacles. This is going to be a doozy when we clarify it in the extended. I'm like, there's something really, really big and massive that's happening to you in May. And the reason why it's happening is because there's so much coming to you and you have to remove some things out of your life and a lot of it that you have to remove out of your life is the notion of something because swords are our thoughts and when we project our when we project our emotions into our thoughts Sometimes it's hard to see the other side. Sometimes it's hard to see the other perspective. It, it, this, is a, this is a very potent time where you can very easily get yourself stuck into a thought loop. I mean, all of these planets and Pisces. That Pisces moon <laughs> that we had in April was something else. Like I literally didn't feel like anything was, I was just kind of floating it through life and not really, I just didn't even really know what was happening. Um, and it's funny because we have such massively big energies to promote change and to promote, um, you know, working better together and working well together. And then yet we fight with ourselves you know, we fight with ourselves about that change or we fight with ourselves, you know, we tell ourselves that we aren't, we haven't done enough or we could do better or there's more that we could give to something when we've given everything that we can give. And it's almost as if we are denying ourselves of our happiness because we have this idea of loyalty, four of pentacles, of holding on to things there's no way if you are looking down, if you are, first of all, holding on to all the things that you currently have and you don't want to let go of anything that you currently have, 
and you're only focusing on those things, right? Four, let's just do it this way. Four of Pentacles and the Four of Cups with that Ace of Pentacles sandwich right in the middle. Universe is trying its best. And what are you doing? You're holding out hope. You're, you've got yourself in a mental imprisonment thinking I don't know what are you what are you thinking it's going to get better um there's so much potential and you know it could be not even just romantic relationships this could be partnerships in your business this could be with a relationships with your adult children this could be um uh, just, you know, those really deep, like family bond, you know, partnerships where y'all work together and something has to change. Something has to shift. And, you know, the, the funny thing about it is you've felt it coming. You've seen it coming. You've seen the signs. You probably, because you guys are so incredibly psychic and so intuitive, but you cannot sometimes listen to yourself. I don't understand that. But even in the beginning of whatever situation it is that you're in, you probably already saw the expiration date of it and didn't want to admit it. And here we are. And those are really hard, honest truths that we have to say to ourselves sometimes. And that sucks. But at the end of the day, and this is one of the things that I've really learned about relationships in my life, is that every single relationship that I placed myself in did good for me in some way, shape, or form. And whether it was a relationship that um, was long-term or whether it was a relationship that was super short, I always learned something about myself. And sometimes those things that I learned about myself, I didn't like very much. And sometimes I resented the other person for showing that side of me to me. And you don't see that until you start looking at the perspectives of other people and recognizing that you're not the only person that's going through some tough things and you're not the only person that's going through difficult life experiences. And, you know, you know, but also realizing that that um, you can't make other people recognize it within themselves. They have to see that for themselves. And the more we hold on to people based on potential that they have, the longer we hold ourselves back. I don't know how many times I've done that. And I learned that instead of me holding on to relationships where people had potential, or holding on to relationships where even if I they even if there was no helping them and I, I you know maybe they have potential maybe they don't but I love them dearly I don't have to participate in them I can send them positivity I can wrap wrap and surround all their experiences and positivity but I don't have to be a part of it and I can bless it and thank it for what it taught me right and so as you go through this, and I'm really excited to, to clarify these things, we have your Scorpio full moon that's happening um, on the 15th and the 16th. And, you know, that is going to have Venus conjunct Chiron. And so some of the things that the Taurus solar eclipse is illuminating for you, your Sc Scorpio full moon eclipse on the 15th, 16th, I say that because it's like, Wherever you are in the world, it's literally, it's like 12, 12 Eastern Daylight Time. So in California, it's going to be on the 15th. In New York, it'll be on the 16th. So, but that's like, man, Venus conjunct Chiron and Aries. It's like, we have got to stand up for ourselves. The wounded warrior is no longer bending over backwards to... Um, appease the people that didn't do right by us, right? This is, this is, you know, so 
It'll be a very interesting one. Um, and then we have Mercury retrograde starting in your eighth house. And the eighth house is all about change and transformation as well. So we'll talk about that more in the extended. Um, and Jupiter is going to be in Aries um, on the 11th um, in your sixth house. So, so much abundance when it comes to work. So much abundance when it comes to um, your, you know, just answers to health things and, you know, stuff like that. Like Jupiter, I just had Jupiter in my sixth house, you know, while it's transiting Pisces, the Jupiter's in my sixth house. And I got so, I got some answers to health things and, you know, maybe they weren't the answers that I actually wanted, but at least they're answers and we can move forward and do something about it. So, yeah, so it's very much going to, you know, be that kind of thing. But, you know, Jupiter and Aries is the warrior. So it's about standing up for yourself, too. So I'm excited to clarify and get deeper with you guys. I love you all. I hope you have a wonderful May. Please take care of yourself. Stay safe. Above everything else, please stay safe. See you in the extended. Bye.